Hello class, I'm glad to be talking with you again. Today we're gonna to be taking notes on Punnett squares. So make sure you have a notebook and a pencil so you can take notes on this video. When you're done taking notes, you're gonna do the practice problems in Google Classroom using your notes for help. If okay, so let's get started. A Punnett square, is the square that you see at the bottom of the page here. And this is used to help predict the physical traits or the characteristics of offspring, which are the children, of a cross between two parents. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one parent's genes on the top. And remember, you get two alleles for every gene, right? One, two and then the other parents' genes on the other side. So in this case, the dad has a big B and a small B. So each of these squares in the Punnett square is gonna represent 25% of the offspring. 25%. Okay, so one of the parents, you bring one letter down from the father's genes, and the other letter from the mother's genes across. Okay, so 25%, or actually in this case, 50%, because the one underneath is the same, big B, small b. So 25, 25% in this square, plus 25% in this square, means that 50% of the offspring will have the genotype big B, small b. And then if you look on the other side, of the Punnett square over here, the father's small b comes down and the mother's small b comes across. So each of these will have small b, small b. So that means that the other 50% of the offspring will be small b, small b. Let's go into more detail about how to do this. Okay, let's do another problem together. So if you remember in Mendel's experiments, he worked with pea plants. So today we're gonna look at pea plants again. So if Mendel crossed a homozygous, and if we remember homo means same, same. So if we have a homozygous tall pea plant and a homozygous short pea plant, what will the genotypes of the pea plants be? Remember, genotype is the genes. Okay, so the letters, big letter or small letter? Genes. Sorry for my handwriting here. Okay, so if capital T is dominant for tall, lowercase t is recessive for short, what will the homozygous tall pea plant genotype be? What will the homozygous short genotype be? Pause for a second and see if you can figure this out. Now, if you guessed homozygous tall would be capital T, capital T, you were correct. Homozygous short, since short is recessive, you should have two lowercase t's, okay? So we're gonna do a Punnett square now using these two pea plants, homozygous tall and homozygous short. Okay, so on your paper, make draw a Punnett square with four squares inside, and you're gonna put the homozygous tall parents' genes on the top, homozygous short parents' genes on the other side. Now we're gonna fill in our Punnett square. So you can see the first big T from the parent on the top comes down and the small T from the parent on the side comes across. Okay, so in this box we've got big T, small T. Then we're gonna do the same thing for the next square. Big T comes down, small T comes across. And same thing for the other two squares. Big T comes down, small T across, 
big T comes town, small t across. Now that we have our genotypes for our offspring filled in, let's try to think about what the phenotypes will be. And if you remember, capital T, capital T was dominant for tall, tall, and the lowercase t was recessive for short, short, sorry for this terrible handwriting. Okay, so take a second, pause the video, see if you can figure out what the phenotypes for each of these offspring will be. If it has a big T and a small T, what will they look like? Will they be tall or will they be short? If you guessed tall, you were correct. Since the capital T is dominant, anytime the capital T is present in the genotype, the offspring will be tall. So. 100% of these offspring, 100% of the offspring will be tall. And this is exactly what Mendel found when he did his experiments with cross-pollinating pea plants. He saw that when he crossed a homozygous tall pea plant with a homozygous short pea plant, the offspring were always tall. Now let's think about what will happen if we cross two of the heterozygous plants. Remember heterozygous means different. Hetero means different. Different, okay, so this is when the genotypes have two different alleles. So for example, if there was a big T, and a small t, that's heterozygous. So let's see what happens when we cross two heterozygous pea plants. Okay, so we're gonna draw our Punnett square again, except this time we're gonna have our two heterozygous parents, right? Big T, small t for one parent on the top, big T, small t on the side for the other parent. So now we're gonna do the same thing we did before, bring the big T down and bring this big T across. So you should have got something that looks like this. So we'll have some of, 25% of the offspring will have big T, big T. 50% will be big T, small t, right? Because we have big T, small t here and also here. And then 25% will be small t, small t. Now, what will the phenotypes of these offspring be? What will the big T, big T plants look like? What will the big T, small T look like? What will the small T, small T look like? Pause the video and take a guess. All right, so tall, big T, big T will make tall offspring, right? Because if capital T is dominant for tall, these offspring will definitely be tall. Now the other two that also have a big T will also be tall, right? Because the dominant allele is stronger. So anytime there's a big T, that's the one that will take over. So that organism will be tall. The only one that will be short is the one that has two small Ts, two recessive alleles. That's the only time we see the recessive trait in the offspring. So now let's think about what the probability will be. And the probability just means what are the chances, okay? What are the chances of getting a tall pea plant? What are the chances of having a short pea plant? Since there are three boxes that have a capital T, right, capital T is the dominant trait, so if there's Remember, each of these are 25% or one quarter. If we have three quarters or three fourths, right? One, two, three quarters that have a big T, then 75% of the offspring will be tall, right? We've got 25%, 25%, 25%. 
So 75% of the offspring will be tall. That means only this box, 25% will be short, right? Because this is the only box that has two recessive alleles, two small t's. Okay, so 25% of the offspring from this cross will be short, 75% will be tall. Okay, now that you have some notes on how to make and read Punnett squares, try the practice problems on Google Classroom. When you're finished, submit back to Google Classroom and I will check your answers and give you feedback by the end of the week. I will also post the answers next week so you can see. Have fun. Email me if you have any questions, and I hope you're doing well. I miss you. Goodbye.